served on 795. I'm sure we all went through the same thing, so I'm not going to go into detail on that. Right. I'll just give you an idea of how I got into service. In 1941, I believe the war broke out 41 December, 7 or whatever, and uh, I enlisted shortly after that. My buddy and I, they had a buddy system, if you remember, and my buddy and I were seeking a place to enlist them. So we went to the Marines. I passed every test in the Marines. He failed. And then finally it came down, he failed the Navy. He got in the Army somehow, and I happened to just get in the Coast Guard. He was colorblind, so I found out later, after he communicated with me when I was the Coast Guard, that they made a bombardier out of him. You know, a lot of people laugh at that. Well, I found out that to be true because a bombardier could see through camouflage. That's right. So it wasn't that fun. You know, at first you go, oh yeah, he's colorblind. What would he do as a bombardier? <laughs> it didn't happen that way. Well, that's how I got the Coast Guard. Oh, beside that, when, when I went into enlist, the fellow told me, he said, what do you want the other services? Look, you got a nice little boat. You'll be in Jackson Park. You can drive around. So it would be my boat. He said, yeah. <laughs> so I had a boat, so that's how I got the Coast Guard. Well, I figured uh, I enlisted, and they weren't calling me. You know, I, after I enlisted, they didn't call me. So I figured, well, gee, they must have forgot about me. This was about six months later, seven months later. So I got married. Four days after I got married, Sure enough, uh, Roosevelt said to me a little, how do you do, you know, hey, come on, join me, you know. And that's I, I went ahead and got in the Coast Guard that way. I, I served the same, I took my boot training, same as Ben, in the Manhattan Beach. Mm -hmm. uh, it was September 9th, 1942, and uh, I uh, was discharged uh, uh, a good many years later, which was 1946, January 30th, 1946. But previous, as we went to Pearl Harbor, I happened to meet... Uh, I happened to have to meet a, 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 my, my brother-in-law through the Red Cross. So he and I got, I called the Red Cross and we had, uh, uh, they gave me his location and uh, how to get them. So I went to see my brother-in-law and sure enough he got a pass from his officer, commanding officer, and we uh, got Liberty. So I said, well, see when we got Liberty, why don't you come spend a day on our ship? So sure enough, I brought him aboard our ship, you know, and as we stayed in line, Bishop the cook, Says, hey, soldier, get him back. I said, hey, he's not a soldier. He's my brother-in-law. The, the bishop said, okay, feed him. <laughs> so I guess you guys would remember this, but I experienced this. Uh, well, what else is important to, to say? As far as the uh, uh, Iwo Jima, of course, we know it was a devastating battle. Everybody knows everybody. A lot of people hurt there. And, uh, and uh, Okinawa was the same. And, uh, of course, Philippines were on the tail end of the Philippines. I guess we all were there. And Buckner's Bay, I remember them telling us about the LSTO, it'll never get hit, it's got a dra short draft or a shallow draft, and the torpedo will never hit it. But when we got to the Buckner's Bay, I didn't mean, notice there were three or four that cut in half, and they were hit by 22s, they were hit by torpedoes. So I guess we all know that too, don't we? Well, what else is there to say? Uh, oh, I, I got married, after I got married, I had two children. One, my, my daughter was born in, in New York, in Jamaica, before I went overseas. Previous to going overseas, she went back to Chicago. Uh, and, uh, of course, two years later, I come back. When I come home, I, I came home right back on my daughter's birthday, which was, she was two years old. Now I'm trying to reminisce to my mind to see what else I could My mind probably isn't as sharp as about, years Tell them about the Battle of New Orleans. Oh, the Battle of New Orleans. Yeah, well, we were all discharged. Yeah, on my way. Yeah, that's right. We we're, were all discharged. And everybody, after we came from overseas, we came to California, and, and some were discharged at the West Coast. And I couldn't. They wouldn't discharge me, although I had a heck of a lot of points I couldn't get out because all the fellows who are discharged uh, uh, in California lived there, and that's the reason they were discharged. I had to take the ship back to the canal, but I suppose when Beth, you were with us, with you? And uh, we went ahead and brought the ship back to New Orleans, and uh, I had uh, spent, I believe it was four or five days in the separation center, and then after I was separated, I went to... Uh, uh, the Delta Airlines, and I asked, I made reservations for my ticket to fly home. Well, this, the reservation was made for a few days in advance, and then after that, I went to the USO Center, and I, play, I was playing ping pong. When I was playing ping pong, I heard a, a newscast come in saying, one of Delta Airlines plane crashes, so I dashed right up there, and I canceled the reservation. I took a train home, and on my way home, we played a little dice, and I happened to pick up about 130 bucks or something. Oh, well, that was my adventure. Of course. Great. <laughs> Great. 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 Well, that's about Great. it. Great. Uh, okay. Uh, I had, uh, my, my wife passed on a few, 
few years back. I was married to my first wife close to 47 years, and she passed on. I had uh, I had very uh, bad luck. My children were all killed in an accident, and I really didn't want to uh, talk about that. But since I met, met Donna, everything turned around. And just like a new man, I feel a little good. All the memories are sort of dropped behind, and I have her to, to bank on that. Good. And now let's just close with that.